Hi, my name is Tony Velias, and you're watching ILearnThings.com, Episode 8, Using Clip Art in LibreOffice. Today I'm going to show you how to take a LibreOffice document like we have here and add uh, an image or two to it. The process is really simple, so let's get started. I'm going to close this document and open up a new one. Um, you can add images to almost any type of LibreOffice document, but what we're going to use here is just the plain old text document. So just create a blank text document. We're going to add in some uh, boilerplate text. Let's see. Um, create five paragraphs here and place them in our document. So now we have a document with text, but we want to make it a little more visually interesting by adding images. And really, it's quite simple. All you do is go up to the Insert uh, menu, uh, select Pictures, and then From File. Go ahead and navigate to wherever you have your picture. In this case, it's called Logo.png. Open it up and the picture will be added to your document. And as you can see the picture is quite large and it displaces all the text. This is not really what we want. We want to make the picture smaller but uh, make, resizing it is really easy too. You see the little green handles here at the edge of the picture? If you click on one of those and drag it'll let you resize the image. If you're not careful though, like what I did here, the image will be distorted. So go ahead and undo that we want to make sure that we keep this particular image square. So to do that, you hold down shift on the keyboard and then you move the little green handle. And doing so will make sure that your image stays proportional when you resize it. And a little smaller. Now if you want to move it, you just click in the center of the image and uh, move it wherever you want. And we're going to move it in the top corner. Now you see this little anchor this little anchor right here, this is telling you where the image is going to be uh, anchored. So what this means in this particular case, if you right click on the image and you go, there's a little anchor menu. There's a couple different options that you have when you're anchoring an image. You can anchor it to the page, to the paragraph, to the character, or as a character. Right now you see the image is anchored to the paragraph. So at the top of the paragraph that the image is in, you see the little anchor icon. And what this means is that if you move this paragraph, say move it down or uh, that didn't quite work looks like it's still anchored there so let's okay so now we ha have it anchored to that paragraph now if we move this paragraph the image moves along with it you see we're deleting all this but the image is moving in relation to the top of that paragraph which is good. Now if you don't want the image to move, let's say we always want it to be in the right hand corner no matter what text is here, you want to right click on this, select anchor and anchor to the page. Now it's anchored to the top corner of the page no matter what text we have here. If we uh, move the text down, it's going to stay there. Okay. Now we have another issue here and that's uh, the text seems really close to the picture. We want to give it a little bit of space. So go ahead and double click on the image and you'll come up with this menu here. There's a couple different options here and you can explore those uh, at, at your leisure. But we'll, the one that we're interested in is the one that's called Wrap. So go ahead and click on the Wrap um, menu item. In that menu item there is a section on spacing. You see here you have left, right, top, and bottom. Right now it's set to zero, so the text is going to go right up next to the image. We kind of want to give it a little bit of space to the right, so let's go ahead and add half an inch of spacing there and see what that does. Click OK. Now you can see we have space between the image and the text. Now there's more space on the right than on the bottom because we didn't add any um, spacing on the bottom, so let's go ahead and add a little bit of space to the bottom. We'll add point 0.2 see what that does. Okay, now well that looks good. Now what if we want to add a border to this image? Uh, if you double click on the image again and you go to the borders option here, you can select the line style. Let's give it a double line. Select the width. We'll add 1.25 which is not too thick. 
And right now we haven't added the border yet because we have to select what side of the image we want the border on. If you just want it on the bottom, you can select the bottom like that. Or if you want the bottom and right hand side, you can do that. But let's go ahead and select the whole thing. Click OK. And now you can see there's a border along the image. Now, if you notice, there's a little bit of space right here between the border and the actual color part of the image. And that's because the image that this comes from has some white there or some clear right so that's why it's showing like the as if there's some space so what we're gonna have to do is is crop the image a little bit so double click on that select the crop menu item and we want to crop from the left hand side and a little bit from the right hand side so you know this is really kind of a guessing game <laughs> So let's see, we we'll probably don't need that much, but let's try 0.1 inch. It's okay, uh, maybe a little more. Do 0.2. See, sometimes you just have to put in a number and keep on trying until you get the results that you want. There, that looks good. Now maybe just a little bit more from the other side here. On the right, we're going to try point 0.1. Okay. Now it did distort our image slightly, so we're going to just move it down a hair, get that square size again. And there we go. We added an image to our document. We gave it a border, and we cropped it a little bit. So now where do you get images? I mean, uh, you know, putting them in the document is pretty easy, but finding a correct image for what you need is the hard part. So there's two resources that I wanted to show you. If you go online, uh, you can find a lot of images, but you have to be careful which ones you use. So you want to make sure that they're licensed correctly so that you can use them uh, freely in all your documents without worrying about whether you need to pay anyone for, for their use. There's two resources I recommend for that, and one is the Open Clip Art Library. The Open Clip Art Library, all their images are under the public domain, so you don't have to worry about uh, attributing them to anyone you can just use them freely for whatever you want they have a little search search functionality here uh, so let's say we want to search for a house just type in house and click search and you should be able to find images that relate to houses in one way or another now the open clip art library all of their images are in the SVG format so if you find an image that you want like this one right here you just click it and you have the option to download it as an SVG or as a PNG. SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics, and what that means is that you can resize it to any size without seeing any pixels, uh, which is a big advantage if you're making huge banners or something like that. But for most documents, PNG is okay. I have found that sometimes with certain images, probably like this one right here because it has some transparency around this little shaded area around the side, that importing SVGs into OpenOffice sometimes uh, causes some errors. You have to try it out and see. It might work for you. And it might be a bug that's fixed by the time that you see this screencast with whatever version of OpenOffice that you're using. So in this case, we're just going to download the PNG. You get to type in the resolution here. We're going to say, I don't know, we want a 900 pixels on each side. And we're going to right click here and the save the PNG as select where we want to save it save it in our home folder here we'll give it a name first so that we can find it later call it house and hit save downloads the image for you we can go back to LibreOffice and let's say we want to put the image here put our cursor there once again we go to insert picture from file find the house image that we just downloaded it open it up and there we go there's the house now again it's way too big so let's make it smaller now when you're working with images in documents remember to hold down the shift key to to uh, resize it proportionally when we're working with images um, in LibreOffice we want to make sure that we start with images that are larger than what we're going to need because you can always make them smaller without losing quality but uh, really making them larger usually end up degrading the image somewhat so there we go that's nice we got one image there and one image in the top 
Now another option that I wanted to show you for finding images, let's say you don't want to use this uh, vector graphic image because they have a very particular look. You just want a regular photograph. Well what I recommend is using Flickr. If you go to Flickr.com uh, you can search for create images that are uh, licensed under Creative Commons, which means that you can most likely use them for your project, depending on what you're doing. If we click on the arrow next to Explore here. We can select uh, the option for Creative Commons. Now there are different types of Creative Commons licenses. In Flickr they give brief explanations of what each one of them is. But for the most part, you can use them for your projects um, and insert them into your documents. We have here is the attribution license, which means that uh, the only thing we have to do is basically say where we obtain the image whenever we use it in our documents. So if you click on that image there, it's a nice image of a subway station. Let's say we want to use this in our document. What we have to do is provide the URL, which is provided right here. Um, as part of the image or uh, sub, uh, put a footnote in the document or something so so whoever looks at the document knows who created this image which is by uh, Mohammed Umrani uh, you can accredit it to him just add the URL to that image and insert it into doc into your document so to download it just click on the magnifying glass you have another option to view all the sizes because uh, usually you can download these in different sizes. Now remember, I always recommend getting larger than you're going to need. So um, you can get the original one, which in this particular case is huge. We don't need it quite that large. So we're just going to download the large size. So again, there's a download link here. Right click on that and save link as. I'm going to save it in our home folder again. Now this particular image is a JPEG before we had added uh, PNG files into our LibreOffice document. The nice thing about LibreOffice is that it's compatible with uh, the most common file formats including PNG and JPEG. We're going to add the image here. So put the cursor where you want to put it. Go to the insert in the menu, picture, from file, find the image that we just downloaded, and it inserts it there for you. Now it's got way too much space, so once again, let's scale this down and move it to where we want to put it. Now let's say we don't want any text on the side. We just want text on the top and the bottom because we're going to maybe put this in the middle. Just double click on that, and if you go to the wrap menu item, once again, there's a couple different uh, options here. What we don't want any word wrapping. We just want on top and the bottom, so we select none. Hit OK, and there we go. Now we got just text on the top and the bottom of our image. And that's pretty much it. That's all there is to it, to adding pictures to your documents. And I think that's a good way to really make your uh, documents stand out, even if it's just a uh, regular letter or a memo that you're putting together. If you, if you put some images that relate to the content that you're writing, I think people will pay more attention. So that'll be it for today, and I'll see you next time.